When we hold on to grievance and pain from the past, we keep ourselves from being able to really move into our fullest expression of self. We need to practice forgiveness from the soul recovery perspective, dissipating the energy and releasing the past for good. If you're interested in this profound transformation, I invite you to join me in Colorado the weekend of June 8th and 9th to have an incredible experience with others on this same soul recovery journey. Two full days of immersion in the soul recovery process where you will indeed leave transformed. You will be able to truly let go of these old pains and step into a new way of being. Check out the show notes for a coupon code and how to register. My name is Reverend Rachel Harrison, and this is the Recover Your Soul podcast, a spiritual path to a happy and healthy life. I started Recover Your Soul after having profound changes in my life from my recovery of alcoholism, control addiction, and codependency. I was guided to share the tools and principles of spirituality and soul recovery to help others transform their lives as mine was transformed. For us to overcome external circumstances, we must first turn the attention to ourselves, focusing on inner change. Outer positive results in our lives will follow. As a spiritual coach, I can support you on your path to make real changes that will bring you a life of peace, happiness, connection, and abundance. Visit the website recoveryoursoul.net to book coaching sessions, read the blog, listen to some of my original music, and subscribe to receive email updates. I think of Recover Your Soul as a community. Follow us on social media and join the private Facebook group to support each other and connect. For an extra episode each week and to support this podcast, become a Patreon member or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul. Hi, Soul Recovery Community. It's Rev. Rachel. And if you are listening to this podcast on the date that it aired, it is October of 2022. And I am actually currently in Mexico doing a work vacation, still doing soul recovery work, but also taking a little time off with my husband and my mom. And this is part of the spiritual journey that I've been on of creating a life that I love, doing something that I love, being of service, being of healthy mind, body and spirit. So I am choosing to play for you some of my favorite episodes from the bonus content for subscribers and Patreon members. So if you love this content and you want more Rachel, become a Patreon member or Apple Podcast subscriber. The links are in the show notes always or on the website. I hope you enjoy what I picked out for you. Welcome back to Recover Your Soul. Thank you for spending your time with me here today. I wanted to talk about the foundation of self-love in soul recovery, and I'm inspired by this from a book called Loving Kindness, The Revolutionary Art of Happiness by Sharon Salzberg. And there was a quote that really took me back because it really made me think of the part of soul recovery that is so essential that I want to make sure that we talk about it. And the quote says, love for others without the foundation of self-love becomes a loss of boundaries, codependence, I add addiction, and a powerful and fruitless search for intimacy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's profound. That's profound because we're here to do soul recovery. Some of us are addicts. Some of us love addicts. Some of us don't have that in our life, but there's an emptiness. There's a void. There's something that we're searching for. There is some desire to connect to a power greater than ourselves, to get the spiritual awakening that will provide us with a happy and healthy life, a spiritual path to a happy and healthy life. And the foundation of that path is self-love. So how many of us really deeply love ourselves, really to that core of knowing your wholeness, knowing your fullness, knowing your connection with God, knowing your connection of the universal source, whatever that is for you, you choose the name that works for you, that universal source of love that you and your soul 
you and your true nature are beautiful, divine, whole, perfect, worthy. Not many of us actually feel that way. And many of us have spent a large part of our life trying to fill that void, trying to fill that hole with the love from somebody else, with the acceptance of other people, with the need of approval from the outside. And so what this quote is really coming to is without the self-love, without that foundation of house, of spiritual house that is our self-love, no matter what we do, when we go out into the world, we won't have the strength to have a strong home, a strong spiritual self. And we're going to be looking for the approval, the need, the love, the intimacy from others that will never fill us up because we don't love ourselves first. That's big. That's really big. And so I think about how we have this desire, we have this need, we have a want to have received that foundation from our childhood. And many of us didn't get that chance. And even for those of us that had loving parents, they did the best that they could with what they had. And it often is still not enough to really build that foundation in us. And I think about how much I told my children that I loved them, how much I told them they were valuable and worthy, and that I read them books and I, and I held them and I fixed their owies with a bandaid and a kiss. And still both of them have come out into the world with the need to find their own self love. And they were raised in an alcoholic home like many of the listeners were raised in an alcoholic home or have been affected by drugs or alcohol or narcissism in our lives in some way. Even though I was doing what I thought was the best that I could do, even though I was providing them with what I wanted, which was the foundation of unconditional love, that isn't what they came out with fully. They have to be the ones to decide, as I've had to be the one to decide in my life, that fixing that foundation, creating that self-foundation of self-love is essential for my development, essential for my growth, essential for my healthy relationships. It's essential for a spiritually happy and healthy life. And as much as I want to have incredible relationships with everybody around me, What I'm coming back to more and more and more is the reliance on my relationship with myself and my higher power as being my first relationship, that this is the center of the wheel that spokes out into my life in all the facets of my life. And what I was thinking a lot about was that self-love takes a trust and it takes a faith that we are good, that we are connected wholly to this universal presence of love and spirit. But many of us don't trust that. We don't believe it. We don't know it. And often when people come into the rooms of recovery, the God, quote unquote, God thing, this higher power thing is really what holds them back from wanting to move forward and have this extraordinary experience. But you don't have to follow anybody else's rules of what spirit, God, source, universe, love, kindness, generosity is for you. That is yours to figure out. But to believe and know that there is some presence, some power, some energy, something, someone, something greater than our human self, than this mind, that something that created this beautiful earth, as I'm looking out my window at a beautiful blue sky and snow and trees and birds, something incredible created this and allowed it to be created. We are part of that. 
So what if we want to help our own foundation? What if we are aware of our need to be approved of by everybody else and loved somehow by everyone else in a way that isn't filling us up? We're ready for change. We're ready to do something different. And so in thinking of this, you know, I love steps being a 12 stepper, I came up with some steps to help build your foundation, to strengthen your foundation, to go back into your spiritual house and decide that you want to create something bigger, better, stronger, that you want a life that is magnificent and full and whole. And so you need a foundation that can hold all that and weather the storms that will come because they will come. And the storms are okay. They come through, they pass through. That's what happens in the real world too. But we have to have a strength in us that allows us to hold the space to be a strong spiritual house and that we can continue to build the strong spiritual house of our dreams and that we are going to start from what is the key essential first step. And that is the self love foundation. So my first step that I came up with to help us rebuild or restructure or re-energize our spiritual foundation is faith. Faith is the foundation of self-love. The faith that we are connected to this higher power, to this universal magnificence, to the brilliance of love, to this energy that makes the oceans work and makes the seasons work and the sun rise every morning, that we are connected and that we are loved and supported by this higher power. Can we trust and be supported and have faith that this higher power is there with us? That's a big step. The next one that I had come up with is the reminder that we are good. In Buddhism, they call it basic goodness. I think that we get so caught up in this comparison that we have with all the people on social media or in the movies or on TV, or even the friends that we may have in our life. We compare ourselves so much to everyone else that we forget to look at the basic goodness in ourselves and in everyone else. That all this outside circumstance, all this outside success, all this outside way of marking who we are in society doesn't reflect exactly who we are on the inside. And that when we're connected with our higher power, when we're connected with our inner God self, our true nature of who we are in our soul of love, the choices that we make, the communications that we have, the way that we relate to people is very, very different than when we're coming from a fearful ego state that wants to have a, have more than somebody else, that wants to be better than somebody else, that wants to win at this game of life, when really life is a curriculum for your soul, for development, for connecting, for healing, for growing. And when we see ourselves as good, we can also let go and accept ourselves as who we are as human beings. To truly allow ourselves to be who we are with our flaws and our insecurities and our doubts, our idiosyncrasies, our quirkiness, our strangeness, our beauty, our wholeness, our smartness, our creativity. To see all of it, to see all those parts, to embrace the dark as well as the light, and to allow for the knowledge that we aren't perfect. We actually aren't supposed to be perfect. Nobody is expected to be perfect. This idea of perfection damages all of us. My husband and I were watching the news the other night, and and I'm so struck by how made up the women are on the news now with their fake eyelashes and, and heavy, heavy makeup, perfect hair, 
We're looking at these people who are sharing the world with us, telling us what the world is. And there is this idealism that not only are they smart, but they they have to look a certain way, this perfection. And so I was commenting on how then you end up noticing if a piece of hair is astray. Because we've gotten so focused on looking at this perfectness of a human, and there is no perfectness. What if we let go of that need for everybody to present themselves in some way that is not real? That beauty is from the inside. Being someone who loves makeup, I love wearing makeup, but I also am cautious of not having that be the Mm, the marker of who I am. It's a part of me. It is not me. And when we can accept these parts of ourselves, the flaws, the imperfection in ourselves, we can start to love ourselves deeply, deeply, truly. As a matter of fact, when we start to let go of that perfection, that need of perfection in all the people around us, we can start to love them more deeply too. No one is perfect. We don't have to be perfect. My next step is discover what's important to you. What is your purpose? What is that gift from from source, from higher power, from, from the universal love that was given to you? So many of us get caught up. I know that Here in soul recovery, a lot of our listeners are from Al-Anon or codependents or alcoholics or addicts, and some of you aren't, again. But we have what I believe in the listenership, a desire to please others, to make sure that everyone else is okay before we make sure we're okay, that we give up of ourselves to fit into our family dynamic to fit into the mold of how we're going to be loved and accepted by others. And in doing that, sometimes we lose who we are. So we're not actually practicing the self love of discovering our passion, our purpose, our gifts, we begin to allow ourselves to live a life that somebody else chose for us. We allow ourselves to be in a life that maybe we think we deserve. Maybe we don't think we can have better. Maybe we think we made this bed, we have to lay in it. And I don't think that's true. I think that if you allow yourself to start to love yourself and feel that connection with spirit, you find your gifts We all have a purpose. We all have a purpose. And it is uniquely our own. It doesn't have to match up to anything that we see outside in the world as being quote unquote successful. There's too much, again, of this comparison of what is considered successful on the outside world. If you have a TikTok video with 5 million views, does that make you more successful than somebody else? No. No, it doesn't. But some of those TikTok videos are hysterical and somebody clearly has the gift of creativity and humor. And is their purpose, what is their passion? And for a lot of us, we have spent so much time and energy being there for somebody else and providing for somebody else's needs that we've forgotten what ours are. So this is the opportunity to practice the foundation building of self-love and start to explore those new gifts that you are discovering within yourself. Explore the bigness of you. Explore the richness of you. Explore the creativity of you. Explore the parts of you that you have been afraid to show. The next one kind of goes with that, which is to follow the path of the life that you would love and focus on what's working for you. So I think that we're told in so much of the way that we were raised or the way that it takes, especially when you're a mom or even a dad, that 
when we're raising children, we have to really put ourselves aside to do what's best for our children. We're working hard. We're out there making money. We're trying to do the best that we can. It's so chaotic and crazy in the house. You never have a time to yourself. When have you been even in the bathroom by yourself without a kid knocking on the door, right? So we forget who we are and we forget to follow our dreams and to allow for our mind to expand more than sort of the drama and the overwhelm of the day. So as you're in this process of soul recovery and discovering your self-love, sometimes it means you just take a breath. You just take a moment and you pause and you allow and you allow yourself to dream And you allow yourself to follow the life that you would love. You allow yourself to have thoughts and dreams and ideas for what could be next for you in your life. And what I love to say is it's not about the actual thing. It's about the feeling tones that you have and that you can allow yourself to start to feel into the feeling tones of being happy and relaxed and joyous and creative. And then focus on what's working for you. We spend so much time focusing on what is not working for us. There is an episode with Rich and I that where we talk about what's focus on what's working in our marriage. Well, what about you personally in terms of self love? Instead of looking at yourself in the mirror and seeing your wrinkles or your changing skin, as I can see in myself, what I try to do is to practice self-love. What's working for you? How can you look at what's working in your life, not just your physical body, but what is working in your life? And as you look at what you love, what you would love in your life, don't look at what's not working. I love spending time with my family instead of I don't get enough time with my husband. I love date nights instead of we never have enough date nights. Move that energy to the self-love where you feel the enough. You feel the wholeness. You feel the love. The next one that I have is self-forgiveness and building that muscle that's the let it go muscle. If we can practice self-forgiveness, if the spiritual world and the religious world says that you are loved and forgiven by higher power, by spirit, by God, by, by the source of the all, why don't we forgive ourselves? Generally, the forgiveness work that we do is really about forgiving ourselves, that Things happen out there that aren't okay. And things happen to us that are painful and can be traumatic and detrimental in our lives. But ultimately, when we forgive ourselves for how we reacted, what we allowed, how we responded, what we saw, what we didn't see, what we felt, what we didn't feel, When you can touch and taste those things and allow yourself to be forgiven in your heart, then you are connected with that divine energy. Then you can feel and have that faith that is the foundation of self-love. What about building your let it go muscle? I always love the idea that When you're working out, you can go work out, but if you don't push yourself a little bit, if it isn't hard, you don't actually develop bigger muscles or stronger muscles that really, if you see somebody who's exercising, they're pushing themselves that next little bit to get the success, to get the, the results that they're looking for. So what if we thought of ourselves as being spiritual in our exercise, our spiritual exercises, that we're building up our muscles, our resilience muscles, our faith muscles. So the let it go muscle is that one where we practice, and sometimes there's 
a big heavy weight on us that let it go. The I don't have control over this. I don't have to have control over this. This is not my responsibility. I don't have to fix this. I don't have to change it. I'm okay. I'm loved. I can get past this. I'm strong enough to get past this. You've got this. It's okay. I am well. All is well. Every time I use those affirmations for myself, I'm building those muscles. And I'm building the ability to let it go. To let the energy of those feelings flow through me, complete their wave, not get stuck and to release the energy and the tension that it's trying to hold in me. My last step, the sixth step, is to keep the focus on yourself. We talk about this in soul recovery all the time, that we don't have control of a single other thing, not a single person, not a single situation, And it is hard to really, really allow us to have that thought process in our life. But once we start to embody that just a little and we turn that focus back on ourselves and we do our soul recovery work, we reflect on it in our capacity to handle it. We are building that self-love muscle. We're building the foundation in our spiritual house of self-love because we are not giving the power away outside of us to reflect back to us if we're okay. We can be okay and we can be strong and we can actually be happy and whole even when it feels like everything outside isn't. By keeping the focus on ourselves by keeping the focus on our spiritual development, on our spiritual life, by leaning into our higher power, leaning into that self-love. Our foundations can be strong and those incredible storms of life can come and try to rock the house, but it won't tear it down. You are strong. You are resilient. You are beautiful. You are magnificent. And everything that's happening around us feels out of control sometimes. But by keeping the focus on ourself, we let whatever that is play out in its own way. We, we stop getting in the way of how that's supposed to go. There's an Oscar Wilde quote, and it says, to love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. And if the beginning quote is that We need to love ourselves as the foundation of loving others. I love this one too, because then it says to love ourselves is the beginning of a lifelong romance. That intimacy, that connection, that juiciness that we desire in our life is right there within us personally. And when that is juicy and whole, then we can express that and feel that and connect with that in a healthy, clear, boundaried way with everybody else in our life. That is the key to happiness. That is the beginning of having a healthy, happy life. Self-love. I hope these six steps have offered you some tools to help to strengthen your foundation in your spiritual home, your self-love foundation. And remember, faith is the foundation of self-love. Until next time, namaste. Are you wondering, how do I go deeper on my path to soul recovery? Or how do I support this great podcast? Well, here's how. Here's your call to action. If you're ready for real inner change and would like to work directly with me, visit the website and book a coaching session. I'm here to support you on your unique path. I'm here to help you let go of the past, to deepen your connection with your higher power, whatever that is for you, and to discover and then step forward into a happy and healthy life. You can also become part of our soul recovery community. One way is to join the support group. It's the first Monday of every month. It's by Zoom from 6 to 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and you can register on the website to get your Zoom link. 
Recover Your Souls on social media. Of course, there's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, lots of ways to connect. And there's even a private Facebook group that will allow for more communication and conversation about soul recovery. There is also an extra bonus episode every Friday if you are an Apple Podcast subscriber or Patreon member. I'd also love all of the listeners to subscribe on the website so that I can keep you informed on what's going on with the podcast, the community, with me, and anything that's up and coming and new and great about soul recovery. Also, if you just take a little bit of time to give me five stars, a quick review, and to share the podcast with your friends and family, we're helping even more people to have soul recovery in their lives. If this podcast is providing you spiritual nourishment and inspiration, thank you, thank you for going to the website and pushing the donate button, whatever donation feels right to you. This means so much to me because I have this enormous mission of sharing soul recovery with the world and your donations, your bookings, your subscriptions, your being part of this community is helping that to happen. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul. The Recover Your Soul podcast and its content is for educational purposes only and is not allied or representative of any organizations or religions. It's based on the opinions and experience of Reverend Rachel Harrison. Recover Your Soul claims no responsibility to any persons or entity for any liability, loss, damage, or cause alleged to be caused directly or indirectly as a result of its use. Applications or interpretations of the information represented herein. Take what you need and leave the rest.